All right, guys, today we are doing a knife profile or a deep dive into the Bark River Knives Bravo 1. Now, without any further ado, let's jump right into it. All right, what's the history on this blade? Similar to the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific, this blade actually has a pretty rich history. Of course, the Bravo 1 is well known and is a is essentially the knife that put Bark River Knives on the map. But how it all started, back in 2006 when the Southern Training Center for the Force Recon units of the Marine Corps bought a bunch of knives, different knives to test, and when their destructive or rather destructive testing was all finished and the dust had settled, one of the two knives that was left was originally the Games Keeper by Bark River Knives. Now, after that testing, and in around the year of 2007, they, Bark River Knives were formally contacted by the Marine Corps or by the Force Recon units and designed a knife specifically to the specifications outlined in the designs and desires of that unit to make a tactical version of the Games Keeper. That tactical version would later go on to be known as, of course, the Bark River Knives Bravo 1. And it is still an incredibly great knife with a lot of design purpose and intention behind it, being not only a tactical, but also very survival oriented knife. So they've now made close to or over 14,000 of these blades. And like I said, it started in 2007. So this guy has more than a decade of history on it. And largely, while well, you can get them in many different offerings and options, the core classic A2 version of the Bravo 1 still remains a very valiant and very capable knife. So what makes this blade so good? Well, first off, it has to all originate with Bark River Knives fantastic and well, fantastic ergonomics. Really little changed in this regard. So it all has to start with Bark River Knives fantastic ergonomics. This blade, much like the Pacific, is an extremely comfortable knife in many different handle orientations, whether you're using a reverse grip or a forward grip. It also can be easily choked up on. And what a lot of people don't know about these thumb ramps is that they were originally designed and required by Force Recon, not so much as a tactical position for stabbing, though it can be used and is jimped with that, but is really more a tactile feel for a place to put your thumb. And this definitely rings true whenever you set your thumb over the thumb ramp. It is a very tactile feel to help position your thumb to put pressure or leverage on the very back of the blade to do tasks such as feather sticking or cutting rope and other such tasks. So it's a very tactile feel and is used primarily or was designed to be used in low light conditions where you may not be able to see your knife terribly well. You know where you are in relation to the blade on the spine on the edge. So that was really the design for the thumb ramp and why I like the ramped versions over the rampless versions. In addition though too, once again, especially in the reverse grip, the meat of your palm really does catch into these jimpings to help prevent your hand from going forward. In addition to that too, you have a very deep kind of front guard or um, essentially position where you put your index finger and that really helps lock your fingers in should you need to do any stabbing or thrusting with the blade. Not to mention too, another port part that really makes the Bravo one quite unique and special is that it has a very, very thick spine, almost as thick as the Pacific, but because it has such a long convex grind that draws out, it leads to a very keen edge that is very well designed and very well purposed for slicing. This blade is really meant to bridge a gap between being a pry bar and is designed for reasonably hard use, even on the tip, but also to have a really good performance with your cutting edge and that convex grind helps keep the rigidity and the strength of the spine up until the point of the very cutting edge where it tapers drastically to give you a very fine slicing edge. So between the ergonomics, between the purposeful blade design, this blade is very strong, very comfortable, but also very precise in its use and design. So those are a lot of the reasons why 
Force Recon wanted the blade designed the way it is and why it feels so great in the hand and performs so well in practice. Now, why should you add this thing to your collection? Well, once again, similar to the Pacific, this is a blade that has a serious history with military and tactical purposes, uh, military application and tactical history. So if you like it for that regard, uh, so you can like it and just want to collect it even just for that historical kind of background. In addition to that too, really means when it comes to a military background, it means that this blade has been per proven on a wide variety of continents in a wide variety of environments. In addition to that too, another reason you might want to add it to your collection is the sheer number of different options from blade steels to handle variations that you can get this knife in to help fit your applications correctly. So who is this blade going to be best served for? Well, with the wide variety of different steels and handles, it does expand the abilities. Of course, A2 not being the most corrosion resistant steel, the A2 version might not be the most appropriate for everyone, but you can get this in CPM S35VN, Crewwear, LMAX, and even more steels than that. Um, so it helps expand the use into more corrosive environments or at least more uh, humid or wet environments. This blade will be best served by those looking for a blade that is on the smaller end, but still need a robust blade that can take a beating and easily be pushed into a multi-role capacity. Of course, this blade's primary applications are to be a utility knife, once again, doing things such as cutting cordage, rope, and uh, doing things like food prep. Also though, you can push it into wild camp situations or tasks such as feather sticking, fire starting, and of course, survival tasks such as shelter building. So this blade can be pushed into all of those roles. And lastly, of course, with its tactical design or partially tactical design, it can be pushed into a last ditch self-defense firearm replacement uh, type of situation. So if for whatever reason you don't have your firearm, your firearm has seized or no longer is no longer functional, this blade can be used as a quite effective lethal option. So those are the primary I, primary reasons and the primary tasks that this blade is best served to be in. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and the quick rundown on the Bravo one. It is a really fantastic blade with, like I said, excellent provenance and excellent history being truly designed by users that have proven this blade on multiple continents, multiple environments, and make this blade what it is. Quite an excellent tool. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.